Hi guys, Darth Deuce here, another figure review, and I got a really cool review for you today. I've got the Infinite Transformation Emperor of Destruction. This is a third party knockoff of the MP36 Mega Masterpiece Megatron figure. Um, been really wanting that Megatron, but I just can't justify paying the price for the official product. It's good, but for the price they want for it, it's just insane, and for at least half the price if not even less than half the price for getting a product which is pretty damn well as good as quality as the official product i decided to get infinite transformation and there's a few different ones toyos factory has one there's a couple others i decided to go with infinite transformation it seemed like the most well received one out of the bunch but here's the box it's a pretty big box um it's got a pretty cool image of well, megatron um here, which looks like original art, but I'm not 100% sure on that. You got ITO1, Emperor of Destruction, Infinite Transformation, ages 12 plus. Really cool image here of Megatron, which I'm pretty sure is an IDW illustration, but I'm not sure, but that looks really cool. On the top here, we have a product shot. Got another product shot on this side, and just some warnings. Got another product shot on the figure, and on the back, we've got a very masterpiece style. Uh, thing going here. We have the ability values down there. Got another image of the figure. All the stuff that he comes with and all that jazz. A read up that I will let you read um, if you want to. So there's that. And then that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, the bottom shows off some of the uh, different faces. I'm not going to bother showing that. We'll see that soon enough. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the box. So now we're going to take a look at Megatron in his gun mode first. All right, here I have the figure in gun mode. And gun mode is really cool. Um, not without flaws, um, but it's quite quite good, um, really. Um, trans Transformation-wise, it is a... I don't want to call it it's a, a hard transformation because it's not a hard transformation to do. It's just complex and time-consuming. There is a lot of steps you need to do to get him in gun mode. And you've got to invest a good amount of time to actually get him in this mode. But once you do, you got a pretty good-looking gun mode. Um, so, yeah. So, the size is nice. Um, I don't really have anything good to compare it to, but the size is quite nice. Uh, it's, you know, full-size handgun. You know, it looks like the Walther P3 handgun that Megatron is. Um... The weight to this figure is really good, and what we'll see better in robot mode is this guy uses a lot of die cast parts, um, and especially in the handle here where the legs are, there is a lot of weight, and I really like the weight to it, especially in the gun mode. That is really good. Um, obviously, you've got the seam marks. You're not going to escape that. It doesn't look too bad or anything. I really like the colors, and again, we will get more into that later in the review, but... Um, yeah, I really like the gray that's used for Megatron here. The black looks nice, and you got like the gunmetal colors on the back here, which looks really good. Um, thing will become apparent for this figure. You can see some of the kibble from the robot mode, so like, there's obviously his head there. It doesn't actually look too bad, um, but it is still kind of obvious. It's not completely hidden away. Um, you can kind of see some bits here as well. That's not too bad, though. Uh, the grip itself is a little wider than, you know, an actual handgun would be um, because of the legs. Like, it's not a huge deal or anything. Uh, if, for them to make sacrifices for this figure, I'd rather the sacrifices be in the alternate mode than in the robot mode. Um, the gun itself is interactive to a certain degree. You've got a die-cast metal trigger, which has a spring, so you can pull the trigger like that. That's pretty good. That's nice and solid can move this bit here. I think it's supposed to be the safety so you can move it back and do whatever you want with it. The hammer also moves back so you can like cock the gun which is really cool. So I do like sort of the realistic touches they added to the gun which is really cool. You will notice he has no Decepticon logos. The figure does not feature any Decepticon insignias because it's a third party figure. They don't want to get sued or anything obviously so that's why that's not there. I do have some reaper labels which I will be applying to the figure. But yeah, there's that. Um, and then pretty much the only other thing to talk about is there are some, uh, I guess, accessories 
to accessorize the gun. So first off, you do have the uh, scope or the fusion cannon, and you can just slide that right on the top. It's easy to do. stays on there nice. looks good. So that's really cool. You also get the uh, silencer here, which is painted like a gun, dark gunmetal gray. Or molded in, I suppose. We're not painting it. And that slides onto the barrel really easily. It slides off really easily. There's no problem there. And I've done it a few times, and I haven't yet noticed any real paint scuffing yet. And actually, same with transformation in general. I've only transformed them once, but I haven't noticed any insane paint scuffing, which is good. So you can slide that on. It's going to be a little hard to show everything. But you also get the stock here, which is quite heavy because there's some, again, more metal, die-cast metal used. And I'm going to put this on off-camera real quickly. And here we have the gun with all its accessories. I'll just pan out here. i got to take a lot of room. But there you have the stock on the back there, the uh, silencer, which does weigh the barrel down a little bit, so it sinks just a little bit, but it's not too bad. And they have a stock there, and it looks really, really cool. I do like how this looks a lot. It looks super cool. Um, stock looks good, and the stock itself has some articulation in it. it has some riser joints and some swivels, which is always good. And put that back down. And overall, I think gun mode looks really quite good. Uh, I'm not going to display them in gun mode, and I don't know how much I'm going to ever be transforming them into gun mode again because it's it is a pain. It just it takes time and which is annoying. Um, but yeah, it looks good. I don't have really too many big other complaints to go on to. Um, I guess while I'm here, I'll take this stuff off. I'll quickly talk about it. I'm not going to do it, but the stock and this cannon and the fusion cannon or the scope can all kind of combine to make this little like turret that you can, Megatron can use in robot mode. And I almost want to say you can use the stock for a display stand, which is also interesting. Um, the display stand option is kind of neat for the stock. The turret thing's kind of corny and stupid, honestly. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's a throwback to the original toy. I'm not going to show it, but you can do that if you want to. But yeah, so that's that. I'm going to put the gun off the side there. Um, and I'm going to now go through the painstaking process of transforming this guy back. So we will be back with Megatron or Emperor of Destruction in robot mode. Alright, now I have the Infinite Transformation Emperor of Destruction or Megatron out of the gun mode and into his robot mode. And the robot mode is super, super cool. There is a lot of awesome going on here. Uh, in terms of the transformation, it is easier to get him back into robot mode than it is getting him from robot mode to gun mode. It doesn't take as long. Um, but the robot mode is simply stunning. It looks really, really good. Um, and for a KO, this has some really damn good quality. I don't really have too many QC issues with this, uh, which is pretty good. Um, he's definitely, quality-wise, better than my Robot Hero Soundwave KO. Um, this the guy is definitely way more solid of a figure. But we'll take a look at his uh, details and whatnot. Um, let's see if I can't uh, zoom in here. Okay, that looks kind of bad. All right, let's pick this up here, and we'll bring him closer. And, like I said, it looks really good. Um, I like the color they used for the most part. It would have been nice to get a more silver-looking Megatron, but it's sort of a shiny gray, which is cool. You can kind of see the sparkling to it. The head sculpt is super, super good. Um, you'll see the alternate faces when we go on the accessories and whatnot. Um, it looks really good. This is the standard expression he comes packed with. Just his normal sort of frowning face. It looks really good. I love the red they use for the eyes. It looks really good, nice and clean. The black in there looks clean as well. And the skull of the head just looks good in general. You got the chest here. Again, no Decepticon logo. Um, I'll be putting a repo label on there later. Um, but yeah, but it still looks good. You got like the clear translucent bits for those like arrows. You got this really nice like sculpted uh, vent detail on the sides. You got these nice translucent bits of blue, yellow, and red look really good. With the vents on the side with the red there it looks really nice and you get the red on the arms does look good arms look good as well 
flip around the back here, you do have that sort of ugly mess that this Megatron figure is known for, but luckily, moving back a bit, there is, Infant Transformation does give us a solution here. This figure does come with the back plate, which is pretty simple. It just snaps on to his back here. Gotta get it. And when you got that on, it cleans up the back quite nicely and looks a lot better. So that's really cool. My only real minor issue I have with this figure in Roa mode is that the gun barrel or the hinge right here that's used the transformation is extremely loose. Like it's not gonna flop all the way down or anything, but it's wobbly, so when you're moving it, it's just gonna wobble around. It's annoying, but I like to just snap in place and not move, so that's kind of irritating. Uh, but that's the only real QC, major QC issue. From transforming this guy, I haven't noticed any major paint chipping as of yet. Um, I don't see any major paint errors. Like, the paint is really clean on this guy. Not like there's a lot of paint anyways, but still. And everything tabs in really nicely and securely. And articulation, all the articulations we'll get to in a minute, is really tight. Or, if not really tight, still tight enough where it's not like a complete annoyance. So, that's really good. You get the black sort of groin spot. Got the thighs here. An interesting thing about the thighs from the other KOs and the official product is that these thighs are full die cast instead of being plastic. So he stands a lot sturdier and it adds a lot more weight and heft to this figure, which is really nice. Adds a lot of quality, which is really good. You got the legs, inside legs, has some basic sculpted detail. And you got, you know. The rest of the detail, not too much to talk about. You got the feet here, which are pretty good, die cast feet. Um, these do like to wobble around a bit. You know, these fold in to um, keep them secure, but they will do like to flop around a bit, which is a little annoying, but it's not too bad because I'm just kind of standing, anyways. So, but yeah, it looks really, really good. You can just see for yourself. Megatron looks fantastic. Absolutely love how this looks. In terms of articulation, we will now move on to that. Like I said, I don't have the issues that I had with uh, my Robot Hero Soundwave. Not that that was bad, but I did have some joints. That my apologies for the cutoff, um, but this is the, like I was saying, we're moving on to articulation now, and I have no real issues with it. So, there's a ball joint at the head, um, which isn't like tight, but it's not loose either. It's not going to flop around. It moves easily. It rotates. You can pivot up and down a little bit. Don't think it can go I mean, look down a bit yeah it's not too much though yeah there's nice ratchet joints at the shoulders moving them all the way up you can hear those they're quite loud looks good ratchets for rotation which are quite good you know they're gonna hold their pose which is great especially for the fusion cannon arm um swivel at the bicep a double hinge at the elbow uh, one thing I will note is that on this arm, this this hinge is a little loose, but and so this panel likes to, to stay in place while the arm moves, so they'll kind of get disconnected, which is annoying, but it's not too bad. And then you have swivels at the wrists, I guess a bit of an in, in and out movement just because of the transformation. The fingers articulate, so you've got a thumb that moves in and out. The index finger has two points of articulation right here and here, and then the rest of the three fingers are... We all move together at a point here and here. And the grip, which we'll see later, is really good on these hands, so that's awesome. He has a swivel at the waist. He does have an ab crunch. What's interesting about this figure is that his ab crunch actually tabs in. So you can keep, so that's nice because it keeps it secure, but if you just pull on it, it'll untab, and then you can get that ab crunch, which is cool. I like that a lot. His uh, panels here, they want two or maybe you just want to clip off okay getting those back on it's supposed to move forward this one does you know they move forward I was gonna f this one should I don't know why it's not there we go they move forward to allow for really high kick and it's fairly solid you know a bit of force is gonna make it go uh, these panels move out, but you get a nice spread 
goes out quite far. So you get a lot of articulation going on there. Uh, swivels at the thigh. A hinge at the knee which moves quite far. It's just a single, I think, but like I said, moves really well. Again, it's a ratcheting joint. Lots of ratchets in this figure, which is really nice. They're nice and strong. Um, and he has a hinge with the foot, so you can hinge it down, hinge it up quite a bit, and you can pivot them as well quite a lot. So that's awesome. This this piece will move if you pivot it too far, but that's not a big deal. So yeah, fully articulated, you can get this Megatron or Emperor of Destruction in a lot of really great poses, so that is awesome. Now, moving on to accessories, he comes with quite a few accessories, so I'm going to get them laid out for you. So one of the best things about this figure is he comes with a ton of stuff. So first off, I guess, those part of his robot, I suppose, you know who get the fusion cannon. Um, which is does actually take batteries and does lights and lights up at the end here as you can see the red light there and makes sounds by pressing this button and by moving this switch doesn't come with batteries have not gotten batteries for it and I probably won't get batteries for it for a little while just because it's not a priority so that's not happening right away um, I'll get them eventually but you know it does basic stuff it does like the the first one does the laser sh cannon shot uh, the second one does the Japanese or Chinese, I don't know which one, um, voice clips, and then the third one does, um, I think, the transformation sound. There are versions of this. The very first versions of this figure came with a second fusion cannon, which had the English Frank Welker voice clips. Mine did not come with that, unfortunately, but at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal because he's going to be on display. I'm not going to be pressing the button all the time, so... But yeah, so that's that. So that is pretty cool. And that clips on his arm, which I will show in a moment. He comes with his Energon mace, which is really cool. At the end here, which will clip on to where his hand is, which I will show. I've got a metal chain. I don't know if... I haven't done my research. I'm not sure if the official product had a metal chain or if it had a chain that looks like Energon. I think he has a chain that looks like Energon. So they decided to just do metal, which is kind of weird, but... It's so whatever, and you've got the uh, ball here, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty neat. But an interesting accessory that you get is you also get a purple translucent articulated one. So the joints are quite tight, which is nice. So you can get like static poses out of the mace, which I will show off soon. You've got a array of weapons. You've got the handgun that Megatron uses to shoot Optimus in the movie. Painted quite well. In purple and light purple, which is pretty cool. Looks good. You also get the lightsaber or laser sword they use against Optimus in the fight, which is also pretty cool. It gets a nice paint, purple paint with some light purple paint, which is really nice. Got this nice purple translucent blade. Blade can be removed like so and the neat thing is you can actually port it into the gun to make it look like the gun is firing. So that's also really cool. I like that. He comes with the uh, mind control helmet or whatever which I'm not familiar with. I haven't seen the episode where he uses this. It's like a one episode I think kind of accessory. It's okay. Um, it's not made of like the most quality of plastic you can clearly see the seam there which is it's like separating here which is kind of unfortunate but the paint is on point on this thing which is really nice it's quite nicely applied I like that a lot and you can put on his head pretty securely which again I will show comes with the key to vector sigma which is a decent uh, weight because it's a full die cast piece it has some nice sculpted detail painted in gold or whatnot. It looks really good so that's cool that you get that um, and then another accessory that is a third party accessory that Infinite Transformation has included is you get Kremzeek. Again, earlier versions I think came with all three versions of Kremzeek with the yellow, uh, purple, and blue one. My, I got the blue one. I don't know if the color you get is random for which one you get. I'm not sure. But I got the blue Kremzeek and he's got some red paint in there. He looks nicely sculpted. He's in a rubber. He's a rubber material. 
but it's pretty cool. I like him. He looks cool. I'm not familiar with him at all. I have no idea what he does, but and you get all of the alternate parts. So you get the alternate battle damaged chest piece, um, which again doesn't have the Decepticon logo. I'm not actually sure how I'm gonna put a Decepticon logo on this one without it looking terrible, but we'll see how that works. And you get the alternate faces. So you get the angry face, I suppose, which looks really good. You've got the evil laughing face. And then you've got the battle damage face, which is really cool. Probably the coolest one. You've got all the cracks in the face. You actually got a crack in the eye, which is really cool. You've got some of the ooze stuff, the Energon, I guess, or whatever, coming out of his eyes and his mouth and stuff looks really cool. I kind of wish the color for it was a little more pronounced, so it was a little more obvious, but it still looks really, really good. Each face has, like, a magnet thing, and it also has a peg to slot into. I want to say the original Takara figure was only magnet and didn't have this peg system, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, that's all the accessories, so now I will show off those accessories on the figure. Or as much as I can. So first off, the cannon. It's pretty easy. Just slots on like so. Clips right on there. And then looks really good. You know, nice size. I like it. You know, not much else to go on. The helmet. Just slots onto his head here. There. Yeah, like that. And that's pretty cool too. So you get that option. His weapons, now he does have the hole and tab system that is popular with um, Masterpieces. Unfortunately, the hole for the tab is huge on the hand, but the tab on the weapon is small as hell. Same problem with the uh, sound wave, but the good thing about this figure is the grip is so, he has such a nice tight grip that you don't need the tab anyways. So you can just close his fingers on it and he holds it really sturdy not wobbling around so you can get him holding the sword it's cool quickly put in the handgun as well not going to do the best job here but like I said you can get him holding that which is good uh, you can hold Dr. Sigma's key probably in a better way I'm not doing it in the best way right now Sort of like that. If I tried better, you could probably get it looking better. And then to get the Energon Mace on there, what you do is you just slide the hand down to remove it. And then you can slide this on. Like so. So you can get his Energon Mace there. And like I said, you can take that, just unplug it from that and plug it from the ball. And plug that. So, and plug that in right there, and then you can get some cool poses, so if I can, I'm not going to do a hugely crazy good job here, but you can pose the mace to your liking, and like I said, you can get it like he's flailing, flailing it back or whatever, so that's really quite cool, I like that a lot, might actually even display him with the energy on mace, I think that's so cool. Um, put his hand back on here. And that lastly is the alternate parts. So let's do that. So let's see if I can get this moved up a bit. Zoom up just a bit. There we go. Alright, so to do it, it's easy. You just slot it off. And as you can see, Underneath, you got that cool sort of uh, detail that we see in the movie when he's being transformed into Galvatron. You got that sort of mechanical detail, which is cool. And then you can just can port these on. They all go on pretty easily. So you got the laughing one. I think that looks really good. You've got the angry one. I think that looks really good as well. These faces are really awesome because it just adds to the to the way you can make the figure look really animated and really have some character with these faces. 
And then this one here, the Battle Damage one's actually kind of tricky to get on for some reason. Doesn't like to cooperate. There we go. And you got the Battle Damage face, looks really, really cool. Apologies for the cutoff again, but now again, there we go with the battle damage. Which again, looks really, really cool. I like that a lot. It looks awesome. So I'm just going to quickly port these off here. Just put back on the standard ones for now. All these things come off really easily and they stay on nice and nicely too, so that's good. So before I end off here, I do want to do some quick size comparisons with some other MP figures, or MP scale figures. Ooh, Megatron as far back as I can. Fix that picture up here. Alright, so first off, here he is next to the MP10 Optimus Prime, uh, which is a official Hasbro product, not a knockoff. And they scale really well. It's a little hard to... Let me aim them down here real quick. So that's pretty good. Megatron is just slightly taller, which I think makes sense, but they scale really well together and look awesome together, so that's really, really cool. I like that a lot. Move Optimus out of the way here. Here he is next to his most loyal subject. Here he is next to Soundwave. Again, I think this scales really well. Soundwave is just a little bit smaller than Megatron, so I think that scales really well. I like that a lot. And then lastly, we of course need to compare him with Starscream, his treacherous second in command, and it's not the best. Uh, comparison because I got his coronation set on and I'm too lazy to take it off but again Starscream is just a bit smaller than Megatron but it makes sense I think the scale looks really good but it also showcases how big the Megatron figure really is it's a really nice size figure so overall I think this figure is really good um, honestly this is a KO a third party figure but it carries a masterpiece grade quality uh, the paint is really good. It's not wearing off very easily. I imagine that the MPs, the official products, paint is, would wear off anyway, uh, over time anyways too. The additional die cast is awesome. Uh, the extra accessories is not much, but it's still a welcome addition and nice improvements. Uh, the nice ratchet joints are awesome. And I really have no real gr major gripes with this figure. Um... I think it's, I don't have, obviously don't have the Takara one, but I think it is just as good as the Takara one, if not better. And I think if you're looking to get a MP36, I think you should get this one opposed to the Takara. You're going to be spending half of what you'd be paying for the Takara and getting the exact same quality figure, if not better. For, especially for the money that you're paying. So, yeah, this figure's awesome. Um, and I highly recommend it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if you think this one's really good, or if you think the Takara one's still better. I'm not sure. Like I said, don't have the Takara. That's why I have this figure. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.